continuing to move forward with our Linux installation, we'll next come to a set of options available to us for what boot manager we want to use on the system. Now depending on your preference or your operating system, you can choose either Lilo or Grub. And the basic concept, as we've talked a little bit about before, is our boot manager is going to manage how the system is going to be booted, whether it's going to allow alternate boot options, such as dual booting to Windows. We can even set passwords to lock users out on the boot process. So there's a couple of different things that you want to think about before you actually go into the installation and configuration of your bootloader. Now, depending on your situation, you might choose to install the bootloader to the master boot record, or MBR, or to the first sector of the Linux partition. Now, there are some interesting benefits and drawbacks to each. Number one, the master boot record is definitely the primary place that we want to put that, simply because it's off the hard drive and it won't be affected by problems that affect the partition in which Linux is installed on. Now, if you're only using a single disk or a single hard drive, then you're pretty much stuck with using the first sector of the Linux partition. If you have some other options available to you, you definitely want to go to the MBR. You're going to get better performance out of it, and you're also not going to run into some of the restrictions that you might when you're installing the boot manager or bootloader to the first sector of the Linux partition. So once we've got that squared away, we're ready to start selecting our packages. Packages, similar to what we discussed before, are basically groupings of files that allow some level of functionality, commonly called a software package or a set of software. Now depending on what you're going to be using your particular machine for, there are various package options. There are so many of them, it's impossible to cover all of them. But if you're choosing a pre-selected installation option, other than custom or upgrade, then you're allowing Linux to choose your packages for you. So depending on whether it's workstation or laptop or any of those options, you're going to get a pre-canned set of packages. Now, don't be afraid to just bypass the package selection altogether and move forward into the operating system installation. The reason I don't want you to worry about that too much is we have package management actually built into the operating system. So you can always go back and remove or install the packages of choice. So there's no real necessary rush here on installing the packages. As a matter of fact, I've got a close colleague of mine that actually always chooses to install every package available when he installs the Linux operating system. And that's pretty nice because it allows him to have any option available once he's into the operating system. But this causes a couple of problems. Number one, the installation can take any number of hours because you're installing every option available. And number two, it's extremely difficult to manage application level security when every single available software component is installed on your system. It also offers a pretty good bit of confusion, especially when you're trying to configure something and there are seven different tools installed to do it. You never know which one is going to be the right one to choose. So as a general rule, you only install the packages that you know you're going to need early on in configuring the operating system after it's installed. After that point, you can go in and remove and reinstall any packages that you needed or didn't need during the installation and configuration process. Finally, depending on the options that you chose, the installation process can automatically check for dependencies. Now package dependencies are when you install a certain set of software that requires another set of software to run properly. For example, a lot of the new video games out there in today's environment require ActiveX or DirectX to run in the background. So that would be a dependent package, if you will. So there are a lot of those that actually exist in the Linux environment. Packages can be pretty much anything. 
And the interesting thing about this is, even if you're using it as a workstation, you don't lose the ability to install server-based packages. So you could have a gaming station that is also your DHCP server and file server for your network. That's another great thing about the Linux operating system, is that there's no restrictions on what role Linux can play in your network. So now that we've pretty much covered everything that we need to, we're ready to move into the actual lab of installing Red Hat 7.3.